Alright, since this video is about change, and since I'm in this big transitional period in my life, I think it's time for me to change with it. Hold on. Ta-da! Shut up, I look cool. You guys are just jerks. The motherfucking world is a ghetto, full of magazines, full clips, and heavy metal when it's smoke. I always thought, when you loved someone, you had to let them go. But it's really not that simple. No, not at all. At the end of it, you're still left with this deep, sinking, pondering feeling as if you were somehow good enough. And it leaves this tiny hole where your heart used to be. You sit and cope with the feelings of validity and resentment, but... That was meant to happen. You're never just gonna be okay from the loss of someone. It's a long and tedious process. If it were that easy, it wouldn't be called healing, would it? It's strange. How in this world, you can fall in love with someone you've never actually met. And it's even stranger how among those said people can lie the person you cherish most in this world. Even if they're someone you've never even seen. When I was younger, I saw this film that changed my whole perspective of love and what it meant to really share yourself with someone. It made me who I am. And that movie was... Her is an absolute masterpiece, not because of how pretentious I am or how I'm a fucking loser with no friends, but it brings this odd feeling of wellness and healing when times get tough for me. What really sets itself apart from other love stories is really just what it represents. It makes it so much more relatable to modern times. This movie only involves one person. This one single lonely man, Theodore Trembley, a struggling writer in the midst of his life, coping with a shitty divorce that he never wanted to happen. It's hard to describe, but when you're alone, you feel like you're walking on eggshells with your sanity. You feel as if nothing gets better when in reality it does. But you really can't tell the difference between what's good and what's not, and that puts you in this weird purgatory state where you feel like a person, but also a husk. Which is what happens to Theodore. You see him do all these unhealthy coping mechanisms like playing video games and seeking some bit of sexual gratification, but even then he still can't shake that feeling of seclusion. You miss the passion in your life, so you chase that high by doing unhealthy things with shitty unhealthy people. But all you need to do is meet that one person to make it all better. But in a world that's so shrouded with pain and heartbreak, it's almost impossible to find the one. But what if they never existed? What if they were just a voice in your phone that you can't help but sit and talk with over and over and over until you get infatuated with everything about them? Warts and all. Even though times get tough and you're struggling, the point of it all is that you're struggling with, well, them. Being with someone helps you rediscover your ability to want. And I think that's what her is about. Well, not really. That's only part of it. Do you ever feel like your world is crumbling after losing someone? Like nothing else matters except these feelings of regret and sorrow? Well, that's okay. You're not alone. We do things every day that make us want to be better people, but we never actually do the things that make us better people. But I don't blame you. It's hard to do it on your own. You need someone in your life to push you and help you do better as a person. 
and even just knowing they're there can calm your nerves to the tiniest thread. And for Theodore, that's what Samantha did. I'm sorry, Samantha, the AI in his phone, who he falls in love with. I know it's a strange concept to grasp, and it's really fucking weird, but honestly, which relationships aren't at the start, right? What Samantha did and who she represented was more real than you and I could ever be. To have emotions and to be loved is in some sense to be real, right? And when Theodore needed someone most, they were there for solace and comfort, even if they can never be perceived by the human eye. I think that's what he needed. What is love without a bit of passion, right? I mean, come on, when you're in love, there's so much to enjoy. Everything feels like it's a roller coaster at a carnival, or, I don't know, a nice breeze at the beach. Your cares and worries for the world begin to fade into this amalgamation of bright colors and a symphony of well-being. Samantha and Theodore's relationship in this movie is, needless to say, more than sappy. It goes beyond that point to become a beautiful piece of the inner workings of true happiness in a relationship. The whispers of sweet nothings and casual walks down the street heal and mend what was broken from pure heartbreak and anxiety a long time ago. It becomes more than love and begins to form into a necessity. And whether or not that was a bad thing, it was needed for that time. The blissful ignorance of people in love could not be challenged by the harsh reality that is the world. And I find that sort of beautiful. When Theodore met Samantha, he was lost and broken to a fiber of what he once was. And Samantha was nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the sheer power of them being together resurrected Theodore's ability to feel whole again. And it gave Samantha the only thing she wanted most in the world. Purpose. It wasn't perfect, but... It was theirs. And no one could take that away from them. Love is funny, and makes you do funny things like going blindfolded at carnivals and make you tongue-tied. But that's the point. And no one could stop that. Only yourself. hope for the best and want things to work out, but sometimes it gets rocky. Problems always come around sooner or later and it becomes troublesome. No one's perfect. Not even a procedurally generated AI, even though that's funny to think about. With love comes insecurity, and with insecurity comes doubt. People seem to think once you get in a relationship, all your troubles of anxiety and pain seem to just go away, but that's farther from the truth. They only get subsided and turn into something else. Something worse. And that only gets dialed up when your partner is someone you can't grasp. Whether they're either far, far away or they don't even exist. You always want to feel loved and give that love, but there's certain aspects of yourself that you just can't give someone, and it breaks you knowing that. You try to break those boundaries by making substitutions, but nothing's like the real thing. You begin to see the flaws and cracks of your relationship, which is what Samantha saw in Theodore. You try to patch things up like cracks and drywall and do the same unhealthy things like you did when you were alone, but this time, you're not alone. There are these invisible boundaries in relationships that you can't cross, and trying to break them inevitably leads to ruining the thing that made you 
feel again. But at the end of the day, the irrefutable truth is... You're drifting. You try as you must to keep that strong flame burning by going away with your person and bonding by a campfire. And making the good times last while the fire kindles along the silk beat up rug. Making songs until daylight rises. But as much as you try to grasp at straws and repair what you had, it's no use. Going into something so powerful while you yourself are a broken person was always meant to end in heartbreak. They said, you both turned each other into different people. And as much as your partner got repaired and you got repaired, you both aren't the people you fell in love with. You rediscover who you are and what you were meant to be and what you want to do with your life. But as you do that, you start to lose the person you love most in this world. And when they're finally gone, you break. But there's still hope. Remember when I said it's not that simple to let someone go? That is true, but at the end of the day, you never do truly let them go. Of course they're gone and not yours anymore, but were they ever truly yours to begin with? You start off as this lost, misguided soul, but when you met them, it seems like something switched inside you to make you start loving yourself again and give you hope. You start to discover who you are and what you want and what's going to be there for you in your future. And that never truly leaves. That's always going to be inside you. Which is from them. Everything comes to an end, but that doesn't mean that the journey never happened. You're still you. And no one could take that away from you. And whether you were broken or never even felt you existed, the thing you both shared was perfect in its own regard. Because you became something that you never thought could happen. A person. And even though it's gone, what still remains is the thing you both molded. Which is... You.
Thank you to Cabalkeens for editing this video. I know it's been a long time since I uploaded, but I'm moving! I'm into my new apartment now! I think by this is up. Probably not, but yeah. And I got new stills! Everything is changing and it's super weird and... <laughs> but anyways, thank you Cabalkeens. I love you, say something nice. Oh, I also love you, Smeet. It's a pleasure yeah, to- fuck you. But anyway, subscribe to Down Bad Boys. It's my group channel. We do stuff. And subscribe to me on Patreon. Give me money. I'm I'm a I'm a college student and I need money. Yeah. But anyways, thank you for all the support. It's been awesome. And I'm Smeef and I'll see you later. Boy, do I wanna put my dick in a phone. <laughs>